So in the phase one of this demonstration, we had a look at how we could configure the ZFS uh, snapshot of an R pool and we have kept that R pool safely under the slash shares directory of 192.168.10.100 machine. We will now boot a client that does not have any OS installed on it and then access the shared file system from that client uh, and then uh, we will restore uh, the client from the snapshot or in this case we are building the client from the snapshot. What you see on your screen is my uh, VirtualBox manager. Uh, just in case if you are not familiar with VirtualBox, this is a desktop virtualization solution available for you to, to download for free. Uh, you could access the virtualbox.org website to download this software. You could have many virtual machines installed in this virtual box. Uh, just about all operating systems are supported on the virtual box including a experimental version of the Mac OS X from Apple. You will see a number of virtual machines on my virtual box and one on the uh, bottom of the list uh, is an empty uh, virtual machine. That means it doesn't have an operating system on it. I intend to boot this machine from the uh, from the CD-ROM, the ISO image of my operating platform and then we will access the shared file system from 10.100 machine and restore it. Uh, we will confirm the settings once before we boot the system so that we don't have any hiccups while going through the demo. It's booting from the CD. Maybe if you want you could uh, specify the hard disk and uh, bring it up because uh, uh, it will attempt to boot from the hard disk if there is anything on the hard disk it will boot it but otherwise it will fall back to the CD-ROM. Uh, during the reboot uh, it will be uh, this order the boot order would be helpful for us because once we boot from the CD and restore from the snapshot and then you do a reboot of the system it's going to pick up the operating system from the hard disk since we have mentioned that in the boot order there. We also would verify that uh, the network interface card is uh, fine and also we will confirm that we have mounted the Solaris 11 text ISO image. So now that the settings look okay for me, we will uh, boot the system. Since there is nothing in the hard disk, okay, now it looks like I had messed with this hard disk some time back. So what I'll do is uh, for the time being, let me go back to the settings here and remove the hard disk from the uh, boot order and boot from the CD and uh, uh, once the system comes up or once the uh, root pool recovery is done, we will uh, change the settings back to boot from the hard disk there. Uh, mind you, if you are doing it fresh, you do not have to do it. I have been fiddling around with this uh, virtual machine for some time, so it is likely that I messed up with the hard disk there and that is why we got that error. Uh, which popped up when it attempted to boot from the boot disk here. Now this uh, process is going to take some time. It's actually going to uh, start asking me a couple of questions like what is the language you would prefer and um, etc. And then it will show me a menu where I'm expected to uh, choose whether I would like to go ahead with the installation from the CD-ROM or whether uh, I would be happy with the shell prompt where I can run the command. So I'm going to pause this video until I get that menu where it is asking me for installation or shell prompt. So I'll see you uh, very soon uh, when I get that menu there. I've got the menu that I was looking for. Uh, it is giving me the option to either the install, either install the operating system from the CD or install additional drivers. So what I would choose to do is to uh, select the shell there uh, because I need the prompt to access the shared file system. We will also find out if there is any IP address uh, picked up by any of these network ports. Uh, there was nothing and in fact we don't have a DHCP server in place which is the reason why uh, it, it, it actually didn't pick up any IP address in there. So I'll say IPADM create hyphen ADDR minus T static minus A. An IP address of the same network where my uh, NFS server also resides and then specify net0 slash v4. Uh, so now I should be able to access my shared file system. Let's try accessing it through the uh, auto FS uh, 192.168.10.100 that is where my shares directory is. Uh, maybe it's taking a bit of a time before it shows up the slash shares directory of the uh, of the uh, NFS server there. You could see that fedg.snap.gz is 
the zip file that we have created from the snapshot of the R pool in that machine. We're going to make use of that here to build our box. Uh, you might have observed that when I tried to boot this machine, it didn't come up because it clearly doesn't have an operating system in the hard disk there. Before I go ahead and create an R pool, I wanted to make sure that I run the format command, uh, maybe format minus E uh, and uh, uh, make sure that I have a slice zero created in the SMI format. Uh, it is important that the R pool that we create for the ZFS file system has SMI label instead of EFI label. Otherwise, the ZFS pools uh, always use EFI as an underlying labeling mechanism on the disks that are a part of the Z pool. But that should not be the case when you are using a disk for your uh, root pool that has to be SMI labeled. So it looks like the partitioning is perfectly fine. I am using the entire disk for my slice 0. I can now label it safely. Now it is prompting me for... Uh, uh, whether I want to go with an SMI label or an EFI label since this disk is to be used for the Z pool, R pool uh, I would need to use the SMI label I'm done with the SMI label and then uh, Control D is the safest way to get out of the format command there Now that I'm ready with the disk my next step of course is to create an R pool So let's create the R pool uh, Maybe I might need to remind myself of the naming convention of the disk there so I would say is it pool create uh, name of the pool is our pool c1 t0 d0 s0 it's likely since I, I was fiddling around with this disk it is likely that this disk this attempt to create a pool might give me a warning that says this disk was already in use so we can always override that with the minus f option of the is it pool command that is in the event yeah you can see uh, an error popped up here uh, that told me that this disk was a part of our pool some time back so I would I would always override that by using the minus F option uh, I have to mention a word of caution here uh, two things one minus F should not be used very casually because it uh, no matter what you do it forcibly removes all of that uh, in addition to that the R pool that I'm creating here is only with one disk which is certainly not a recommended option in a production environment so you need to have a mirror pool when you're creating our pool on a production site. I don't need to tell you, but it's my responsibility to remind you of that. Now that we have the R pool ready, we're going to receive the uh, stream. We're going to receive the snapshot stream from the shared file system to the R pool, which is in fact the process of building this machine. So for that, I'm going to run the command uh, uh, gzcat gzcat slash net 192.168.10.100 slash shares slash the name of the snapshot is fedg.snap.gz pipe it and say zfs receive it uh, and uh, receive it onto the r pool uh, so uh, the stream the r pool snapshot is located under the shares folder of the 192.168.10.100 machine we are accessing it via the autofs here under slash net directory we're going to make use of that gzip file first we will gunzip it which is what we are doing by using the gzcat command we are reading the content of that file and the uh, the, uh, the reading operation is redirecting the output to the zfs receive command i'm receiving the file system onto the r pool which i just created using the device that you might have uh, used to create the R pool. So as you can see, uh, this process is also something that is going to take some time. Um, obviously, we do not have to uh, keep watching all these messages showing up on our screen. So I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to give you a break here, pause the video for some time, at least until this particular procedure is over. And then when we come back, we will uh, see the rest of the procedure required to build this machine from the R pool snapshot that we created. So I'll see you in a while. So uh, the snapshot stream is received onto the R pool. Now that the R pool is ready, uh, we are expected to set a few properties on this R pool before we can move forward. So the property that is in discussion here is a property by the name bootfs. We need to point that to the R pool slash uh, R pool slash uh, root slash solaris on R pool it's Z pool set. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so that property is also set. Uh, of course, the other important thing that we shouldn't forget is to create a swap device as well as dump device because 
while we created the snapshot we also destroyed the swap file system and the dump file system of the original R pool so we will recreate that here uh, create minus V uh, 500m on that R pool slash swap we'll do the same thing for the dump device as well so I'm, I'm giving a very low value here just to demonstrate to you the need to create this on a production system of course you have to identify the appropriate amount of swap it depends on the apps that would finally run on that machine and then you would need to specify the command accordingly so we are ready with the swap and the dump device as well uh, we recreated it uh, the next step uh, is uh, once we are done with it the next step of course is to uh, make sure that we install the uh, the the uh, grub of course uh, a number of documentation would refer to the command install grub on an x86 box to achieve this objective but then uh, install grub is a command that is obsolete now uh, instead we should be using a command called boot adm this is a fairly easy command to use so if you run the boot adm command here you can see the different sub commands i think there is no price for gussing here because our intention is to uh, install the bootloader uh, we used to do that by using the install grub uh, but now we are expected to use the boot adm command so i'll run the sub command with the appropriate option boot adm install bootloader and on to the pool the name of the pool of course is r pool so uh, this will install the bootloader onto the r pool a very important step without which uh, you will not be able to boot your system up and let me mention this one more time to you uh, prior to this release prior to this version we used uh, install grub command but it's changed install grub is obsolete so a number of documentation would probably be suggesting you to use the install grub command even if you attempt to use it that's going to give you an error instead you should be using the boot adm command here so that command also went through quite fine uh, as a, a matter of some sanity checking we uh, we will run a devfs adm command on the solaris boot environment as well as create a reconfigure file in the event if you have new devices connected to this machine you might want to detect those new devices when the system comes up so for that solaris offers you an easy way you just create an empty file by the name reconfigure here for that pur purpose i'm mounting the boot environment that is created which is solaris so since we uh, so it's badm mount solaris i need to specify the mount point here uh, so since uh, we uh, we received the stream from the snapshot there were a couple of uh, zones that were installed uh, when i took the snapshot which is not available here that is why you're getting those warnings but doesn't make a difference because our global zone is intact uh, now what i'll do is i will uh, uh, first run the devfs adm command with minus cn option and this will clean up the uh, devfs adm uh, minus r this will clean up the device configuration file and then we will touch a file uh, mnt reconfigure now this will make sure that when the system boots up next time it will try to reconfigure the new devices uh, and it will remove the file the reconfigure empty file that is created is going to be removed after the first reboot is done uh, we will activate the boot environment solaris uh, badm activate is the command so uh, fine so uh, it, it, it is succeeded it's trying to find out the current BE there is nothing so that's why it give you those warnings but uh, it's activated now what I'll do is I'm done with this so I would use the init 5 to shut down the system I should have unmounted that boot environment as well which uh, you could do using the command BADM unmount Solaris I didn't do that in any case after shutting it down it's going to be unmounted so uh, let the system shut down once the system shuts down we will go back to the settings of the virtual machine uh, we will change the boot order from the cd-rom to that of the hard disk uh, if all the steps that we performed here have gone through fine then we should be in a position to boot the system from the hard disk and uh, the system name the host name you will get to see will be sys00 uh, so let's go back to our virtual machine here uh, we will go to the settings we will uh, uh, make sure that we change this from CD-ROM to hard disk. Let's try booting it. Uh, you would remember earlier when we tried to boot it, it gave us an error. 
uh, then we booted from now at least the grub is showing up and looks like it is booting uh, if we get to see the host name as sys uh, s11 sys00 that would actually mean the system has been um, uh, recovered quite well I wouldn't be going through the entire booting process here I would assume that you've understood the procedure and the procedure is working quite fine because if this machine comes up there is going to be an IP conflict when I took the archive of the other box uh, the IP address configuration all of that is a part of that uh, snapshot so I don't want an IP clock conflict to show up uh, as, as soon as we see the host name as soon as we see the machine uh, giving us the booting messages I'm going to stop this uh, but I hope you have understood the steps involved in creating the snapshot, saving the snapshot in a shared location and finally using that snapshot to recover a machine. In our case, of course, we created or built a new machine, but you could use the same procedure to recover a machine as well. So let's wait for a minute's time to see the booting messages, to see the host name showing up. As soon as the host name shows up, we can safely conclude that the recovery procedure that we used uh, using the ZRFS root pool snash snapshot did work well. So yes, the snapshot actually belonged to a machine by the name S11 Sys01 even though the prompt was slightly different there. So uh, looks like this has gone through fine. I hope you have understood the steps involved in creating the snapshot, saving the snapshot in an NFS location, then using that snapshot eventually to build an S11 client. Uh, please make sure that you uh, make an appropriate plan before you do something like this on your production system. Um, you, you have the login screen as well. Maybe we can log in using the password there. Um, that's okay. Let me try to recollect the password that I use for that system. Um, maybe yes. Okay. Now I forgot the fact that this is a Solaris 11 box. So let's log in using the user ID there and yes I've got the machine up and running quite fine so uh, I hope this video was useful thank you so much for watching uh, we will meet up again soon